One of the most important tools in Photoshop CS4 is the ability to clone and heal uh, images to fix blemishes and problem areas. Well, how do you do that in video and have some kind of success at it? Well, this is a very painstaking process. I got to say, it's not automated. If you want a more automated approach, then I highly suggest you go to After Effects CS4. In After Effects CS4, you'll be able to clone video and apply it to video while it's running. So you could take a, uh, a different piece of time, put it in to uh, kind of a time shift of sorts, and clone out things. And there are just a lot of tricks you can do repairing video in After Effects CS4. If you want to learn more about that, pick up the title, Learning After Effects CS4 from PhotoshopCafe.com. Well, let's see how we can fix this in Photoshop CS4. So let's let this run. This is a, an old uh, commercial that I grabbed off from uh, the Prelinger archives. And we can see it's just an old piece of footage. And there's a little bit of dirt and stuff in here, but it doesn't look too bad. I've just got a little bit along the edge here. And the rest just kind of looks like old film. Well, that's not how it was originally. Let me turn off the altered video, that is the retouching I've applied to this piece of footage. And you can see just how horrible this was to start with. I've got this uh, burn mark here, or some kind of a crawl or scratch or some kind of emulsion uh, that has been eaten away over time. I've got all of this dirt, all of these scratches in here. And uh, this is a, um, a good example of uh, really old footage that's going to have a lot of problems. This has been uh, abused and not taken care of very well, or it's been viewed a lot. Who knows? We do have a lot of color shifting going on. That's a harder thing to fix over time, but not impossible. But at this point, let's just take a look at how we can use our uh, Roto tools, which are the healing brush and the clone stamp on each layer to get a decent result in video layers. So that's my roto layer. Let's look at the actual raw uh, video that I've got to work with here. This one is unaltered, so we can look across time here and see all of the scratches and imperfections that we have to work with here. Well, with this kind of video, the video, the camera is moving. So if we had a locked off shot, you may actually find this technique to be a little more problematic because you will visibly see some of the clone marks, uh, say if the background was still and you just had a moving object, it may be a little harder to get away with what we're going to do here. But because the camera is moving, our background is moving, and our subject is moving, everything's moving in frame. One thing that we can do is uh, to clone out. I'm, my eye is going to this big burn hole first here, i got to tell you. So my inclination is to go in there and just do some standard uh, retouching on that. Let me uh, get a little bit smaller brush here so I'm not grabbing too much. And I want a soft edge brush. I'm going to use my clone source. I hold down my Alt or Option key, grab my clone source, and you can see that it's showing me how much it's going to cover up here. I can just kind of paint that out, and that gets rid of that on that frame. I can advance to the next frame, and I can continue to do this using the same source. And I'll probably do that as long as I've got this nice grass area here to work with. I'll just go down frame by frame, give a few clicks, and it changes. And I've got one right here too. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. So I can get away with doing this a little more. Like I said, just because the uh, background is moving as well, we're not going to see these edits quite as much as if I had something that was a locked off shot and uh, wasn't moving at all. So uh, we'll just do this for a few frames, get some of this done. And notice I wasn't paying attention there. I got some of the car in there. So I need to re-select my clone source. And uh, I just want to get this down to a point where uh, I want to show you the next trick and what we do when it starts moving up into the trees. Got to be careful there. and just grab a few more here. And it's starting to move up. And this is where 
we've got several things going on here. We've got the car is moving over time, the camera is moving over time, and it's zooming out. So as it zooms out, we've got a different situation here. I'm going to go ahead and come down into time here where it's moving up into the trees and it's done zooming out. And I'll show you a little trick here. Since the since it looks like right about in here, it starts as zooming out. It's pretty much done zooming out at that point, at least to a point it's going to be very noticeable. And what we can do, I'm going to change my clone source over here. Go over here to the next one. And that way I can have a preset that I can bounce back and forth while I'm working on this project. So I'm creating this new clone source. And what I'm going to do is actually clone out here in time. So I just want to move down in time a little bit till I see that those trees are out here. Let's start with this one right here. And I'm going to use that as my clone source. Okay, so I selected it on this frame at that time and I want to move my playback head down to the point where that is in the area that I want to clone. There we go, right there. So now see how I can line this up right here. I can line up that branch right there and I can just clone over. What I'm doing is I'm cloning clear back here where we first selected our clone point and then I can just pick up anything that's in the way there. So now I can go to my next frame and I can clone that there. So it's picking up clean footage that was in that space earlier in time. And you can notice I'm getting, you know, nice results here. But I have to, you know, again, I have to do this frame by frame. It's not going to automate anything for me. So for big problem areas like this, this is what I use the clone brush for this the clone stamp tool and this works pretty good for getting rid of big nasty things like this I don't use it for the scratch touch-up we'll get to that in a second with the healing brush but uh, for this this works really well especially with old footage where it's really forgiving just because there's so much noise and other stuff going on other distractions this uh, this works really well so I'll just do a couple more frames here and notice how I'm using this tool but as I advance some of the frames don't advance with me that's because the, originally this was filmed this was 24 frames per second and this has been converted for uh, computer video it's been changed to 30 frames per second which is also NTSC video and uh, we'll get into uh, all of that in another section where I talk about video sources and uh, corrections and formats and all of that. So look for that video if you're trying to understand what I'm talking about here. But that's why if you're going through something like this and you advance and it doesn't look like you really advanced, that's because it's been converted. So I'll do just a couple more frames here. Then we'll play back just that area. Let's look here. And notice down here I've got this purple bar. That be, that's to tell us that we've got altered video along that area. The area that isn't means there's nothing done to it. So let's just come down to our workspace here. We'll play back just that little section that we cleaned up. And we can see that's, I mean, while it's moving, you can't tell there was ever anything there. So that's a great way to really fix that, uh, fix up that problem. And I can come back to that brush again later that stamp uh, preset anytime I want. So if I want to come back over here and use this one, well say I want to come in here and just grab this and fix up this little area here, but then I wanted to go back to that brush, I just grab another preset. So use these presets, they're really helpful. Now we're going to go on to using the healing brush and this is my tool of choice for doing uh, a lot of stuff um, that I don't want big clone marks. I don't want to be restricted to that. I want it to actually do the job that the healing brush is meant to do. So I'm going to still utilize these presets. I'll start working backwards. I'll make this my first one. And I like to make sure that I've got it aligned because unless I've got a great big area of one kind of texture, I like it to be aligned just like my clone stamp. So if I 
select something over here. I want to be able to cover up right there. I, I don't want to keep resetting my clone space and I want to just be able to count on knowing that that's where my information is coming from. That way I can retain shadows, uh, body panels, things like this, you know, because it's a direct clone straight over. So that's how I like to use the uh, healing brush. So I just go around and I just grab all these little things that stick out, you know, stand out to me. Of course, you can go really crazy and, and really refine it a lot. But um, I like to just do this, you know, frame by frame. Again, uh, being careful if I was to do that here, well, I'm grabbing the edge of this door panel. So I definitely don't want to do that. I'll come over here, grab another preset. I'll grab my source from the other side and line it. There we go. And now I can come in and work other panels and other things from, from both angles, just jumping back and forth on these presets. So these two presets here will, will get me through most of what I want to do with the healing brush. So I'll be selecting uh, the one on the end that will draw from the right. I'll select the one next to it to draw from the left. And I can just work back and forth that way. So working my way down the line here, I can just come in here and use the healing brush to grab areas that really need the help, that really stand out. And because I'm using the aligned brush uh, source, then I can really count on things that have horizontal lines. We've got a lot of horizontal lines in something like this because the car is in motion, the background's in motion, so uh, that's going to generate that automatically. But again, this is a very long process. So if you have something, you've, you've got minutes uh, of footage like this that you have to work on, um, make sure you give yourself lots of time, lots of coffee, lots of patience, and uh, just take your time and do it. And you'll end up with results like we've got here. So uh, let me go back to my original video here and uh, let that roll. Now what I would like to do with something like this as well, I would like to be able to uh, overscan this or resize this cleaned up video footage to get rid of the black bars and some of this noise on the edge that's just a little too hard to clean up. Well, I'm going to have to convert this to a smart object layer. So we'll do that first, convert to smart object. And while I'm doing that, we have to know that we can't do this before we do any roto work. Just like uh, several effects or other, other things we try to do to uh, footage, if you want to work frame by frame, you have to work with the original footage uh, file layer uh, format. Because once you convert it to a smart object, you can't paint on it frame by frame, you can't roto it, you can't use clone sources, and there are certain filters you can't apply to it. So if we wanted to apply a filter to this at this point, uh, now that we've converted it, we can do that. We can also scale it now. Can't scale it over time, but we can scale it. So I'm going to overscan it just a little bit, pull those edges out uh, just a little. Let me move that up a little and move this down so I can see my corner and scale just a little bit more. There we go. Great. Enter it. I'm going to get a RAM preview here. And there we go. That's a nice clean piece of footage that I'd be proud to use. So those are some real um, real world techniques for cleaning up frame by frame your layers with the clone tool and with the healing brush and uh, a lot of time and patience.